So we're back in the Tweed Valley to bring you a second instalment of Hot Tech from EWS Round 1. And I want to see some more drivetrains. There's prototype tyres everywhere. And I'm going to go and speak to some mechanics in the pits as well. Stay tuned. So I've just managed to steal one of the uh, team riders, the Raw Level 9 team riders, Raw Madonna V2.2. Now this is out, you can buy it, although it does look like a prototype. It comes in four sizes, but you get to choose two rockers with that based on what your riding style is or what your weight is. Basically, one has a lower leverage ratio, so you can get more small bump sensitivity if you're lighter or you like that. And the other, the Rocker 65, which is what Chris is running here, is the higher leverage ratio. So that basically you need more force to activate that suspension. And that's just his riding style. He likes it like that. Um, and we've got a first ride Schwalbe on the front here. But what really grabs my attention is a little prototype derailleur down here at the back. Now, uh, the two riders, uh, Chris and Torben, are engineers and they've obviously started to play around with their Shimano XT derailleur. Now, Chris tells me that he's made this CNC machined out of a piece of aluminium and the top jockey is a lot stiffer so that it becomes more precise changing. Also, if it takes any abuse over a race, then it will still be more precise than something that bends. And also, we've got down here the lower jockey wheel um, has a press fit bearing in there so and because it's been CNC machined it's a lot more precise so you can get the bearing in there it moves more freely and it doesn't change over time as well and become less sloppy basically and uh, the chain ring as well at the front is a custom aluminium CNC machine chain ring which is there to match uh, the derailleur which is part of Chris's own brand, Frazen Components, which he's prototyping at the moment. Um, and although it's a prototype, we may be seeing this and the chain guide by the end of this year. So beautiful looking bike. So I'm here in the gyro tent and I've just noticed some custom kit and some uh, gloves. What can you tell us here? This is not quite custom. This is what we call our studio collection. So uh, every number of years, so we did this, what, four years ago, three years ago with EWS. We work together with them to produce something that's really cool and unique and special. So this is our Giro EWS Studio Collection. We got a number of pieces. My favorite new long sleeve shirt. We got long sleeve Rouse jersey, short sleeve Rouse jersey. We got these killer gloves that match right up, socks. Um, just great style for trail riding, racing, and just wearing around town. They're great, you know I'm a big fan of your gloves. But um, I've also noticed something lurking around on this shelf over here that I don't recognize from your lineup. What can you tell me about this? Uh, that shouldn't be there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just got off the plane a little jet lagged and that's not supposed to be out, you know, sorry. <laughs> uh, I guess I will say that it, since you've already noticed it, uh, this is something that's out in a couple of weeks. It's a new full face. You've probably noticed the, the Giro full face, the Disciple's been in the line for a while now, a number of years. It's time to replace it. That's kind of a look at the future, I'll say that much. <laughs> and uh, your ride is Richie Rude, no? Is he here today? Will he be in something like that? We've got a number of really good riders out here wearing that new helmet. So yeah, if you've been paying attention, Richie, of course. Uh, we got Bex Barona on that team, she'll be wearing it, Casper Woolley. Uh, we're really excited to work with the BH team this year. So we got Florian and Melanie Pugin. Uh, we got some riders like Reese Werner. They're all going to be wearing this new helmet, even though it's not out yet. A little too good to keep from them. <laughs> what new helmet? Yeah. But thanks for talking to us. So I'm just here with Craig, the mechanic for the Lapier Zip Collective. And uh, well, I was just wondering what you've been up to since you've been in Scotland with these bikes. Yeah, so we, we got here um, Saturday with the guys to get a, just a good time flight in. Um, and then we've just been getting used to the area, get used to the terrain. Um, we're up on sort of Glen Tress the past couple of days, just there's one track there and working on that and looking at different options and choices on setup. Um, so this is Adrian Daly's bike. Um, this, this year we've moved on to the RockShox production uh, suspension. We were on the Black Box program last year where 
It was very similar, but just early stages, and the guys have done a really nice job developing it, and now it's available out there, and we're on full production, so we've been having a play about. Um, really, as far as testing goes, it's all about just getting the tunes dialed in, the shocks getting the right tune, compression, rebound, and spring rate, uh, find out what works nicely here and what it varies. Like Adrian and me, we both live down in Nice, near the south of France, so it's very different terrain. It's a lot warmer, hotter, drier, a bit more scraggly. Um, so yeah, I've been looking at the coil, I've also tested the air a bit, and just the air obviously gives you a very different spring curve. Um, so I've just played between, find out what he's comfy on. Are most of the riders on coil for Scotland here? It's really going to depend. Um, we've got Adrian on one hand, obviously one of the top male elites, but the other hand we've got Isabel, who's one of the top girls, and she's considerably different in weight, she's only 50 kilos. So you've just got to take that into account on how it affects the spring curve, where they're going to sit in the travel of the bike, um, what it's like for here. So just now with Adrian, we've done coil air back to back and we're, we're liking the air. Um, so we're going to see from there, see how he feels practice tomorrow. And I'm just admiring your toolbox. Craig, tell me, what have you got going on in here? Yeah. Um, I'm quite lucky. One of my friends makes uh, carbon fibre rally car panels. So uh, he sorted me out a load of carbon and a bit of cutting. Um, Basically, that's my travel toolbox. goes everywhere with me. Um, weighs in at about 18 kilos, so it's not the lightest, but it's got everything I need to do my job. Um, effectively split it into four sections, and I was kind of sad in that I spent three, four days in the workshop, and I just, as I used a tool, I put it to a side and worked out what was used the most and what was used the least, and then I built my box around that order of accessibility, um, and then what will be needed quick in an emergency. The top layer that sits just in here, um, it's all my Allen keys, Nipex, cutters and pressure gauges. Um, the top in the lid, we've got again tyre levers and then sort of top caps, picks, T10s, uh, valve core tools and a clock. Clock's probably the most important thing. Um, and then down in the bottom we have three sections, which is all fluids, Block tights, small tools. The sort of smaller section is syringes, greases, that sort of stuff. And then the front is laid out with the lesser used big tools, so circuit pliers, brake, uh, bearing presses, hanger alignments, uh, cassette chain and whip, tube, steer tube cutting tools, that sort of thing. Now you don't have a, an actual tool sponsor, so this is all your own choice. And I can see there's a couple of little homemade jobbies. What have you got going on here? I quite like um, being able to just pick and choose what brand I want to use. So I'm a big fan like Nipex pliers and cutters, Facom tools, Norbar torque wrench. It's just you can go to individual brands and choose what you want that's best for doing your job. Um, in terms of when we custom things, it's actually quite the simple things. Um, that's a pair of uh, lock tight or lock on collars from a set of grips weigh nothing, go in the, ba in the box quite light um, you can use them for making sure when you cut your bar you get a nice clean cut just put one either side and use it as a guide for the saw so that's quite good got a small piece of rotor um, this is a rotor that's worn to what I believe is the correct size it's got a slight chamfer being be able to push between pads and using that I can set the piston distance exactly for what the guys like feeling wise on their levers um, so that's quite good. And then the, I guess the other wee ones, that's a wee brake block that's had one sort of quarter cut out of it. With that you can rotate through a quad piston caliper and work each piston out individually and lubricate each piston as you go. And lubricating the pistons is what actually will give the rider a really good feel. Um, so that's, that's pretty useful. Um, I guess the other thing's two pressure gauges, like pressure is probably the most important thing. So there's my main one, and then I've got a reference one as well. Cool. Thanks very much. Thanks for talking to us. No Thanks. Problem. So maybe not in Duro Tech. The team are on the Ibis Ripmos, of course, but this is the Ibis XC, which is obviously their cross-country bike. And we went to see this being handmade in California in the Ibis factory. Beautiful sub two kilo frame here and we've got 120 fox up the front 34s and 100 mil in the rear and yeah just couldn't walk past it it's such a pretty pretty bike so i'm here with eric and this is not a forbidden dreadnought i expected to see here what what's going on here eric yeah so we're doing a little uh tour to ews we're going to be bike touring 
uh, between the first three rounds. Um, so we're here at the first round and then we'll be heading to the a Petsen round uh, in two weeks from now and then to Italy a week after that. Um, we're trying to be self-supported and so uh, yeah we have everything here with our custom bike bags that our friends in Bellingham uh, Loam Equipment made and then um, this bag they made custom and it, this is actually my bike uh, like flight carrier so my bike went in here on the airplane and then it turned into the front roll and then uh, I've got a backpack with another set of wheels uh, stored on my backpack here and then um, yeah we're we're riding on uh, on the road and then also we're gonna take some trains because otherwise to get to that next round we'd have to average 110 miles every day so we're gonna take the train from Edinburgh to London uh, we just thought that would be more fun um, <laughs> but yeah otherwise we're gonna be riding through France and then we're gonna try to make it to Leo gang for the World Cup downhill just to spectate and say hello yeah we're gonna just have a tour out of it and we're we're trying to be really frugal with it. We're trying to show that bikes are transportation. And uh, so we've got a bivy sack, sleeping bag, sleeping pad in the back here. Um, yeah, and we, we slept by the tennis course last, last night. That was pretty fun, but I think we might even be sleeping in this Forbidden Factory tent tonight. So we're moving up in the world. Um, yeah. Have you got any idea how much all of this kit weighs on top of you and your bike? You know, I haven't weighed it and I don't know if I want to. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I want to. Um, it, it feels great when you're on flat ground. Going up the hill, it feels a little bit heavy, but you know, it's gonna get us in shape. Like, I'm doing the races, so yeah, I'll ride into shape, I think, you know. Are you in the EWS or the 100 or? The, the pro, yeah, the pro race, so. Wow. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, another reason that this is fun is like, kind of takes the expectation off of the racing like this is my first time traveling abroad to do EWS and so I thought I might as well have some fun with it and also you know try to do it pretty frugally like I'm self-employed and I just thought it would be a fun way to do it and uh, yeah my friend Dan is traveling with me with his camera and yeah we're having a great time so far. Well, I'm really impressed with your journey and with your bike packing bag on the front there. That's your own invention. So best Thank of luck you. in the racing as well as the travels. Thank you. Yeah. Can I give a shout out that we're fundraising for uh, World Bicycle Relief, which, uh, you know, provides bicycles as transportation for people. So if people want to look up Tour to EWS and uh, donate a little bit of money for people to be able to transport themselves with bicycles, uh, we would really appreciate that. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, absolutely loved seeing all of the custom parts today, seeing riders making custom parts for their derailers and mechanics making custom tools specific to their jobs. So let us know what you've enjoyed today and don't forget to subscribe if you don't already follow us.